Hello all, so if you remember in the last video, we started talking about how we could reformat some of this document to make it look a little bit prettier. And we basically put a box around the page so that the students knew where they should write between. Now what we're gonna start doing is talking about how we could put stuff at the top and the bottom of the page. In other words, in terms of a header and a footer. So the way to do this is to come up here into our preamble. Um, so remember the preamble is the stuff before the begin document. Okay, so where we've got the packages, how we reformatted the questions and parts and the dotted lines and answer lines, etc. Uh, always comment, always good practice to do so. So let's put header and footer just underneath, that's fine. And I need to tell LaTeX what page style I wanna use. So I'm gonna go page style, backslash page style, and open and close my curly brackets. And in this case, I'm just gonna use head and foot. Okay, you can play around and, and sort of experiment with other types of page style, but I find that this one works well for me. Okay, so first things first, nice and simple, let's actually just put a line across the header. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a running head rule. Okay, so backslash running head rule. If I recompile, what you will see is that a line or a rule comes across the top of the page. Okay, so across the header. Now, you notice if you look very carefully, it doesn't appear on that first page. So it will appear on the second page, on the third page, on the fourth page, right the way through to the end of your document, but it will not appear on the first page. Now, at first glance, you think, oh, that's so annoying. Why is it doing that? But actually, it makes complete sense. Because often, when you're creating exams or worksheets or things, the first page will be like your title page with instructions and perhaps the name of the exam sort of done. And in fact, I'm gonna show you how to create a nice title page for your exam in the next few videos. So it makes sense to have the header and the footer defined differently on the first page than to the rest of the documents, okay? So it's not the end of the world, okay? All I need to do is just come up here and just go backslash first page head rule. And now if I click recompile, you will see that the rule appears on the first page as well as all the other pages in your document, okay? Uh, I guess whilst we're at it, we could also put a foot rule in here. So again, same kind of thing. First page, foot rule, and also a running foot rule, like so. And then that'll basically put a rule across the bottom of the footer there, okay? So that'll work quite nicely. So just bear in mind that if it's first page, you need to find the first page separately, and then running means everything else in your documents, all the other headers and footers in your document, on the other pages in the document. Okay, fine. Um, so this is fine, okay, so we've got the rules, but uh, let's see if we can actually put something in the header and the footer. Now in this video, we're only gonna look at uh, putting stuff in the header, and then the next video, we'll start looking at how to put stuff in the footer, okay? So let's first of all um, put a running head header in here. So let's go backslash, running header, okay? Now the header will basically put three inputs, okay? So you can put stuff on the left, put stuff in the middle, and put stuff on the right. So to show you that, I'm gonna put three sets of curly brackets, and I'm just gonna put, uh, well, I'm just gonna type left, middle, and right, just to show you, okay? So basically it's just gonna take the text left, middle, and right, and put it in the three relevant positions. So you can see here that because I put left here, it will appear on the left, and then the middle, and then the right, okay? Which means that these three brackets, I can basically change and fiddle around and get it looking exactly how I want it to. Now, what I would really like is on the far left, I would like the module code, okay, which I'm teaching. But what I don't wanna do is have to dig through the code every single time and have to change the module code, say if I'm teaching a different module. I really wanna use this as a template, which I can just copy and paste every single time and make it as easy as possible to edit, okay? Which means that I don't wanna be digging through code. So I think rather than typing the module code in here, okay, um, what I'm gonna do is actually define a new command. So I'm gonna come right to the very top to make it really easy to find, okay? Uh, and in here, I'm just gonna put my details, okay? And I'm gonna define a new command. And again, I need to put two inputs. If you remember, the first input is the actual name of the command which I just need to type every single time. So in this case, let's just call it the module, okay? In fact, let's call it module code, okay? Uh, and then the second bracket, what the actual module code is. So again, in this case, let's just call it foundation. So let's suppose I'm teaching the foundation module, okay? But again, I can change that to be whatever I like if I'm using a different template, okay? So it's a really easy way of changing this. So now if I come down here, I can change my left. So where it says left at the moment, I can just go backslash and module code. And you notice that because I've defined a new command, 
LaTeX has already installed it, okay? And it will already suggest it for me. So I can just click module code down here. So now if I click recompile, you will notice that left will now change to whatever I put in my module code. So you notice here I put foundation, okay? If I wanna change it to the higher, I can just change it there. And then if I click recompile, that will change to higher for me, okay? So it's a nice way, and it means that I don't have to have details like that buried within the code that I would need to dig through and change every single time, okay? Um, okay, what do I wanna put on the right then? Well, I suppose I wanna put the uh, paper title on the right-hand side. So again, I'm gonna go new command. I'm gonna go paper title in the first uh, set of brackets. That's my command that I'm gonna type every time. And let's suppose this title is just gonna be the end of module exam. And again, by putting it here, it just means it's a template so I can change uh, this really easily every time. So I come down here to write, can just change this to paper title like so. Now, if I click recompile, you can see that write will change to whatever I've got the paper title called, in this case of end of module exam. Okay, what about the middle then? Well, the middle, I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm actually gonna put an image in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna put my logo. So, um, the way to upload a logo onto Overleaf, uh, I, have, I haven't really shown you what's going on over the left-hand side, other than this is where your document is found, okay? You notice there's three, um, there's three documents, there's three sort of buttons over here, okay? So you've got, first of all, new file. Now, if I click new file, that would basically bring up a completely blank code file, a completely blank middle document, which allows me then to create another exam if I wanted to. Okay, so I could have multiple exams down here on the left-hand side. If I click new folder, which is the middle button, I can actually start storing stuff in folders, which can be quite handy, okay? But the one which I'm actually gonna use is this one here, which is upload. And I've got various different options over here on the left, but I'm actually gonna upload this from my computer. So I can either click select from computer, or what I'm actually gonna do is just simply drag and drop my logo across in there, okay? And it will upload quite nicely. And you can see, just quickly check, there's my logo there and it will appear. Okay, so let's go back to example exam then. Okay, so I need to actually include that graphic into my document. So I need to input that graphic into the document. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And this technique will work if you want to, for example, include a graphic within your questions as well. So say, for example, you've got a graph that you wanna include, you would just simply type backslash include graphics, okay? Include graphics, then you can see curly brackets appear here. Now by default, I've got image header in, in is my is my name of my file. So all I need to do is just type image header. Now LaTeX will act, or Overleaf will actually bring up um, whatever graphics are installed. So if you've only got a few graphics, you could probably um, quite easily find it this way. Or you could continue typing the name of that file up here. So if I just click on that, then that would work nicely. Now things to bear in mind if you're including graphics, um, the best graphics that work uh, for Overleaf and LaTeX are either PNG documents or PDF documents, okay? Perhaps EPS documents would work as well. Um, but yeah, I, I've just used a PNG document. Um, best way of getting a PNG document, by the way, just, in, just import it into PowerPoint, right click, save as picture, and then it will automatically save as a PNG document. So a little tip there. Okay, cool. So let's now compile this and see what we get. Now, this is gonna be ridiculous because you can see that my logo is just there, but it's just way too big, okay? It's not being included properly on this screen. So I need to scale my image. So the way to scale my image is to come between include graphics and where I've included the name of the image, put square brackets, and I could either scale it according to either scale, width, or height. I'm gonna use width. So I'm gonna go width, and just to show you there's different ways of uh, including sizes in LaTeX, I'm gonna do it in terms of the text width. So I'm gonna go width, width equals. Now the text width is gonna be everything from this left line over here, so this left line over here, to everything to this right line over here. Okay, so this is my text width. So this kind of gives you an idea. I think about 20% of that distance will be fine. So what I'm gonna do is just simply type 0.2 or 0.2 of the text width. And notice that I'm including text width as a command, okay? So now if I click recompile, then that logo will appear nicely sized in the middle here. And obviously you can change this however you like. So you can do it in terms of height, you can do it in terms of scale. Um, you can even do it, so you've done it in terms of text width, you can do it in text height, or you can even do it in terms of millimeters like we were doing before, okay? Now a couple of other things I wanna do before, um, before I finish off this video. Um, where I've got module code, okay? You notice at the moment it's in black. Now I think what would be really nice is that everything outside of this uh, of this box that I've created, um, it would be nice if everything was kind of in grey. Okay, so all I'm going to do, 
all I'm going to do is actually just come down here to where I've got uh, the left hand side, so this module code, and I'm just going to go text color. Now text color uses two inputs, so I'm going to use two sets of curly brackets. Now in actual fact, in the second set of curly brackets, I want to have what I want the text to be. So in this, code, in this case, the text is module code. So that goes in the second set of curly brackets. In the first set is actually the color. So I could just type if I wanted to, gray, okay? And you notice how this now will change to gray, okay? And that would work fine. But what if I wanted slightly more control over um, the color of this, uh, of this text? And perhaps it might be a color that I wanna reuse again. Well, what I can actually do is define a color. So in fact, if I come up here, let's define a color. So go backslash define color. Okay, and define color, I'm gonna use three inputs. I'm gonna use three sets of brackets. The first is the name of the color that I wanna use. So this is basically, if I wanna give a new name to a color, let's call this washout gray, I would type it here, okay? Second bracket is what I'm using to code that color in. Now, uh, there's different ways, and I'll show you this in just a second. I'm gonna be using RGB, so I'll just type RGB here. And the last one is the actual code of the color itself, so what the actual color is. Now, the best way of doing this is actually just coming to Google, okay? And I'm just gonna type into Google, RGB color picker, okay, RGB color picker. And what I can basically do is actually select a color which I like. So at the moment it's all in red and I can change the tone or the hue of the color down the bottom. Um, I actually want it to be gray, so I'll just come over here. Um, I think that something like that would work nicely, okay? So you notice I've got five different ways that I can define a color. I've either got hex, so I could type hex and then include that key. Uh, RGB, which is what I'm gonna use, so I'm actually just gonna copy that. Or I've also got CMYK, HSV, and HSL as well, okay? But mostly hex and RGB are the most commonly used ones. So I'm using RGB, so I want that code. So I'll just copy across, and it was 140, 140, 140. And so now, when I've got my text color, I can actually just use this color that I've defined, which is washout gray. Okay, so if you wanna actually define your own color, which you can then reuse over and over and over again, I can just simply do it using that. If I recompile, it will then change this to a slightly different tone of gray. Okay, cool. Um, I might actually wanna make that bold as well. So I'm just gonna do text BF and put that in curly brackets. Cool, okay. And I'm also just going very, very quickly, gonna also change this paper title over here as well. So I'm just gonna go text color. And again, I'm gonna use washout gray, the color which I've just defined. And let's change the paper title to be bold as well. So let's go text BF and make sure I've got the right set of uh, brackets, which I think should be there. Okay, cool. Let's recompile. It might throw back an error because I might have slightly too many brackets here. Yes, it does. Okay, it's not an issue because Overleaf will still compile, but it's basically that I've just got too many brackets. So I'll just recompile that. And there we go. Okay, cool. Um, now you notice that's just all of the uh, headers in the document. If I also want it on the first page, very simply, I can just copy this. So copy all this code, copy it down here, and I can just change running to first page. So now if I recompile this, you'll notice that the same header will appear along the top there as well, like so.